This is the chapter on decision trees. Let's go ahead and start talking about it. Now, you have some basics here on why we do decision trees and how they work. Some important things to understand is that we are going to sort through the data with a graphical display. And that's what a decision tree is. Basically, we're creating segmentations. This means it branches. You'll see this later on. The computers basically do this, and we haven't been able to do this lately because computers have become more and more powerful. Now, we have different types of data. We really want to use either categorical or quantitative, and the decision trees we have been using, which are regression decision trees, will actually break a quantitative variable down into categories, as in the examples we saw in class, was height was broken down into above 70 inches and below 70 inches. So you'd have two categories. You don't want to use an identifier because it'll create too many categories and they're just generally not good because you're just basically identifying each person instead of creating groups. So here we go. Basically, the more decisions we make, this is sleuthing through the data, the more decisions we make, the more chance we can make a type 1 or type 2 error. That is to say, as we sort through the tree more and more and more, we're saying a variable is significant. And as we'll see later on, we can get to things that aren't significant. Generally, your first split will be the most significant, but later and later and later splits will be less and less significant, well, more likely. And they might not be significant at all. If we say that they are significant, and they're not, that is a type 1 error, because we're saying this variable is significant. That says you have evidence. So you're rejecting the null that it's not significant. You're saying it is significant. And thus, if you're wrong, you've made a type 1 error. If the variables we don't put in, we'd make a type 2 error by saying they're not significant. So there's a lot of chance for mistakes with decision trees. Just more decisions lead to more mistakes. Not always, but generally speaking, more decisions. If you make 10 decisions, you could have possibly made 10 mistakes. So that's why. So creating the decision tree, we have one Y and multiple Xs. The Y is the response again, and the X are our explanatory variables. Something to note here is we don't put all the X's in at one time. It's going to put them in one by one by one, and these are the splits. And this is how to do it in jump, and I would highly suggest doing this in jump. Just check it out and do it. Here we go. Once again, how to enter it in. You can see I have all the variables. It's actually everything. You can see how far down this goes. We're trying to predict gender in this model right here. And then we have the data. With the males are blue up here and the females are the reds. We don't have the color points color coded, but we could have. There's 730 people in the data set and we haven't split it at all yet. So on the first split, which is usually the most important, we see height greater than or equal to 70 inches. And this is how many males there were. This blue right here, there's 269 total that were greater than 70 inches, 70 inches or greater. And a lot of them were males. We can actually do a leaf report I think that's a little further down. There's the leaf report right here. So we can actually see under the leaf report, we actually have one of those leaves right here. This has additional splits. But the leaf report is very important because it shows you that there were 18 females that are 70 inches or greater. And that's kind of shocking that there are only 18 females who are 5'10 or taller. It's, you know, basically 5'10 or taller, the probability of being a male in this data set is 93%. And, yeah, if you have a friend who's 6 foot, it's probably a male. But that doesn't mean for certain, but we generally see that males are taller. Going back up here, we have the interpretation. Um, let's go look at the R-squared on this tree back up here. The R-squared is 43.7. So 43.7% of the variation in gender, which is our Y, is explained... And you could say by the tree or by the variable in the tree. And this is a model. So what we're doing is we're creating a model that explains gender. So we are trying to explain gender. So the R squared is percent of variation in gender explained. Going down here, we can see what happens as we do additional splits. This is your first, second, third, and so on split. As you do more and more splits, there is generally less variation to explain. Because at first, we could have explained up to 100% of the variation. After the first split, we've explained 43.7, the second split 53.4. So there's less and less variation. This means they're less significant and they explain less variation. And we'll look at a few more things here, but take note of this page here. 